Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch. Welcome back to our ongoing Babylon JS tutorial series. Today we are going to be talking about lights. So basically adding some lighting to our scene. Uh, now I assume you've gone through the previous tutorials in this series. So when we jump into our code, you should immediately know what we're doing. We're going to build on some previous code. Now, as you can see in front of you, the text-based version of this tutorial is already up. I will link it in the comments down below. So without further ado, let's jump into our code. Now this code is very straightforward. Basically we're creating a box in 3D space. And then we create a camera that rotates around said box. And that's about it. And now what we're going to do is add a light to it. We're going to cover two different kinds of lights in this tutorial today. A point light and a spotlight. Now a point light is basically a light in 3D space. Think of it like a, a lamp with no lampshade on it. That's a point light. Basically it radiates out in 360 degrees until it hits the surface. Um, and that's kind of how they work. Now on top of a point light, we're also going to cover spotlight. Now a spotlight is more like a traditional flashlight. Um, it's a light that generates from a given source, it goes in a specific direction, it has a certain amount of fall off over time, and generally it's cone shaped. So again, your, your traditional flashlight is a spotlight. And those are probably the most two commonly used types of lights in the, the gaming basically. But there are others supported by um, the uh, Babylon game engine, including uh, hemispheric light, uh, which basically would often be used for things like um, sun, uh, for example, uh, but we're going to look at those two specific today. And you can probably guess how to implement the other one because as is this case with Babylon, the coding structure is very straightforward and very consistent. So let's start off by creating a point light. Point light, quite simple. So var light equals uh, new Babylon dot point light, give it a name. Point light sounds good to me. Uh, now we got to give it Babylon vector 3 this is where to create the light so this is where the light is going to radiate from which is 10 units off the y-axis um, and add it to the scene that's it uh, we just created our first light now one of the things that lights can have is color now we'll go ahead we'll uh, set up diffuse color uh, Babylon dot color 3 so we just created a red light district, more or less. We'll go ahead and run this and let's see how we're doing. Let's go over here back to our browser, shut you down and reload. And there you go. There you can see the red light in action. It's straight up and above. So that's why we're not influencing these other faces here. Uh, we could move it uh, forward slightly. So let's move it. Oh, actually we moved it left slightly, but you see there it's influencing that face. Whereas if I actually moved it forward, like I said, I was going to. Um, I think it's negative. Oh, no, it's positive. You can see the influence of the light from the front. So that is a point light in essential, uh, essentially, basically. So we can now, if we wanted to, we could move it uh, a great distance away. And you will see the, um, it does, it still radiates out uh, consistently. So let's go back, turn that back to 10, back to zero. And now let's just show something a bit new to uh, Babylon, not necessarily related to lighting in, um, in any way, but what we're gonna do is wire up an action handler for on um, key press. And when we press the space bar, what we're going to do is turn the light on and off. So I'm gonna show you both how to turn the light on and off and how to handle keyboard uh, entry. And now, of course you could use traditional Java uh, script style keyboard entry if you wanted, but here is the um, Babylon light. So we're gonna create an action manager. Scene.action manager equals new uh, Babylon dot action manager and create it for our scene like so. So I got a feeling that beginning is redundant. But anyways, so we created our uh, action manager and scene.actionmanager.register action. So basically this is a new action that's gonna fire. So it's babylon.execute code action. So what we're saying is this action, we want it to basically fire off our code. Uh, the trigger is Babylon dot action manager dot on key up trigger parameter equals space. So when we hit the space key, we are going to fire off set action. All right, so I need to be on, oops. All right, so that is part one. 
And then, so we got our comma in, now we need the actual function that is going to fire when that action is called right here. And we'll just go light.setEnabled equals not light dot is enabled. So basically what we're doing here is we're recalling the code if this is enabled. If it is currently enabled, we're going to do the exact opposite. So it's basically just a toggle, light on, light off. And hopefully I have not done any typos there. Close that out, close that off. Close my register action and that out. Got an extraneous there. I think I'm good. Now let's go ahead and run that. Reload our code. And hit the space bar. Light off, light on, light off, light on. So it's very easy to turn a point light on and off. Um, you can just use the um, is enabled and set enabled combination to toggle the visibility like so. All right, so that is a point light. Very simple, very straightforward, and a little bit of a bonus that is also how to deal with actions in Babylon. It looks a little confusing, but it's realistically, it's not that bad. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so now we're gonna move on to creating a um, spotlight. Oh, actually here, no, I'm gonna show you one other thing that we can do actually before we move on. And that is we are going to modify our light. So basically light.diffuse.green plus equals 0 0.01 and dot blue. All right, so what we're gonna do here is basically every time we run through our render loop, we're gonna change the light color slightly. So remember earlier we set the light's diffuse color to full red. Now what we're going to do is add a little bit of green and a little bit of blue every frame update until we end up with a white light. Now go ahead and run that, switch on back, reload. Light is not defined. Oh, I actually have to get the light. That was stupid. All right, var light slight, let's do light equals scene.get light by name. And remember when we named it earlier, point light, that is important, that is also case sensitive. All right, so that gets us a reference to our light. That's it, all right, now let's go on back over to our browser. Uh, we will rerun this sucker, and there you see, over time the light is switching to a full white light. So you can control the color of the light dynamically as much as you wish. It's just a simple RGB value representing the red, green, and blue channels of said light. Um, and that's about it for point light. Now let's move on to a spotlight. Now as I said earlier, a spotlight is essentially uh, like a flashlight. Um, and once again, dealing with Babylon JS, the code is very, very straightforward. Now I'm gonna have to get rid of all this. I don't need any of it. Uh, I don't need the spacebar handler anymore. All right. So now to create the light, a spotlight, very similar, var light equals new, and then Babylon dot. And in this case though, what we wanna do is create obviously a spotlight instead of a point light. We shall dub the spotlight. And there's a couple more parameters involved in this guy. So first off, we have to pass in a vector three of the light location, like so. So basically we're saying this light is located 10 up again. Um, but now we need to pass in a second parameter, which is the direction the light is facing. So what we're going to do is just do, this is just a normal vector, so there's no unit involved. Uh, so ballon vector three, and in this case, we are going to look down the y-axis. So we're above, we're 10 units above, and we're just saying point this light source straight down. And all right, so that's in there. Now we're gonna set the, the amount of, remember I said earlier, the light goes out in cone form, but we now have to give it the angle that that cone is going to take. Uh, that is going to, um, you could work in radians, but I'm going to work in degrees and convert them to radians. So Babylon tools two radian. I just find degrees easier to comprehend. So basically, our light cone is 45 degrees. So um, what is that? 22.25 in each direction about its center, and the fall off. This is the rate that the light stops going, or basically the length of the light beam. Uh, so we'll make that that distance and then finally we add this guy to our scene like so and we will go ahead and hopefully have not made any errors made error two radian is not a function all right i typoed something just a second 
two radians. Which is kind of wrong because it's technically only giving me one radian, but um, semantics. All right, we'll reload that, and there you see. So basically, we're being lit from above. Now, again, we could set the diffuse color of this light. This light could be any color we want it to be, but in this case, we're using the default, and the default is white. Now, uh, let's actually show this guy a little bit more you know, interesting. We'll actually have it move across the scene as it goes. So in the scene uh, or the main loop, uh, we'll just go, first we got to get a, a reference to our light again. I'm not going to forget that this time. So scene.get light by name. And our light is called spotlight this time. Like so. And now that we have our light, let's grab its position. Y value equals or minus equals 0 0.01. So we're just going to, every time we render, we'll move the light further and further away. Now let's go ahead and run that. Or further, further in actually. So we're going to get closer as we go. And there you see. So there is the light getting closer. You can see the effect of said light cone as we move in. Um, it's again being cast at a 45 degree angle. That's what that 45 degree value that determined like how wide the cone came out. Uh, but that's it. That is a spotlight in action. So really lighting is quite simple. Um, there are a couple of gotchas to be aware of. Uh, the biggest one is the standard material type, something we're going to talk about a little bit later on. But basically, standard material bundles up um, some of the GLSL programming behind the scenes for us and texture mapping all together into, you know, so we don't have to deal with that crap. And one of those things about GLSL shaders is lights are passed in as a parameter. And there is a limit to the number of lights you can use to interact with a standard material. So that means the textures, which we're going to look at in the next section, uh, will only support a maximum of four light sources initially. And if you go over that, uh, you gotta keep in mind for every single light source, it is gonna basically double the processing requirement for every fragment or every potential pixel that's drawn on screen because that light has to be processed for every single um, you know, potential pixel there. So the, the limitation on lights is there for a reason. There are performance issues, especially on mobile devices. Now, if you want to override it, um, you can set the max simultaneous light property of a standard material and define however many lights as you want. Just know if you get much over four, you're gonna have questionable performance on certain mobile platforms. Uh, desktop should be able to handle more, but again, you don't want tons and tons of dynamic lights in your, in your scene because they do add a lot of complexity to the underlying shader processing and obviously then some GPU overhead. So don't go hog wild with lights, don't add too, too many. And if you can fake it somehow, you're probably better off doing it that way. And there are ways to actually fake lighting. You can actually emit light sources out of textures, for example. Um, we'll look at a little bit of that in the next chapter when we cover materials. Uh, but that's it for today. That is lighting in the Babylon JS engine. Now do keep in mind, there are another couple of lighting types available to you, uh, such as I said earlier, the hemispherical light and a couple others. Um, and they're useful for things, like I said, like uh, em emulating the sun or a gigantic ambient light. You can also set an ambient light actually in your scene, uh, which is sort of a light that just exists. Um, that's part of the scene property itself. It's scene.ambient light, I believe. Uh, but this is it for specific dynamic lights within the scene. So today we covered spotlight and point light, uh, but the basics carry across to all the other types of lights. So if you got this down, you've got them down. They will all make sense. I hope you did enjoy that. If you did, please do click like. And of course, we've got all kinds of tutorials, game dev news, reviews, etc. here on this channel. If you haven't already, do click subscribe. Also, I haven't ever mentioned it, but my... Um, my Twitter channel is at Game From Scratch, which you could probably guess, but if you want to follow on Twitter, uh, that is available there. And finally, again, all of the source code for all of the projects we've been doing here uh, is available in excerpt form on the linked form, but I've also created a project that is all together. If you're a patron backer, uh, there is a WebStorm project that has all of the source as I'm working on it available in the Patreon Dropbox folder. So do check that out if you are a backer. And again, as a backer, thank you very much. All right. All right. See you all later, guys.